Hi students, this is Professor Schimmel from Crafton Hills College and I'd like to show you a little bit about aseptic techniques or aseptic methods. These are methods that we use in the microbiology laboratory to prevent contamination of our cultures and ourselves and our neighbors and most especially your professor. Um, aseptic means without sepsis or without contamination. So let's talk about how we would do that. Um, all right, first of all, let me just demonstrate for you how to light a Bunsen burner. Most important thing is to remember to light your, um, your lighter or your match before you turn the gas on. Hold it just over to the side of, uh, of the burner, not directly um, over where the uh, gas is going to come out. Slowly turn the gas on. There you go. And I'm not sure if you can see that from there, but I've got a nice blue uh, cone in this flame and that's uh, exactly how I want it. Now you can adjust the height of the burner by rotating this dial on the bottom. Uh, if you were boiling water to dispose of cultures, you'd want a pretty high flame, but for um, aseptic technique, we want a flame about this height. And then rotating the barrel, um, either to the left or the right, is going to adjust the mixture of uh, gas and air. Anyways, good flame right there. Uh, first of all, let me talk to you about what we're gonna be doing here. I'm going to demonstrate for you how to streak slants, uh, broth, plates, petri plates, and also uh, stab into deeps. Those are the techniques that you'll be using in the laboratory this semester. Now, first of all, when we are streaking slants, we are streaking for maximum growth. We're streaking to produce a large quantity of the microorganism to use in further tests uh, or in our experiments. Uh, when we are inoculating deeps, we're usually demonstrating uh, something about the biochemical activity of the microorganism. We have a number of tests that involve stabbing deeps. When we are inoculating petri plates, typically we're doing a streak for isolation. And so what we're trying to do is separate the various bacteria that make up a mixed culture, which is typically what we're going to obtain from a patient uh, specimen. So we can um, isolate those various bacteria, identify them and determine who the culprit is, whoever, is, uh, whoever it is that is causing the uh, patient's infection. And when we are inoculating broth, we are generally also either trying to produce a large quantity of the bacterium or there are some biochemical tests that involve the use of broth. Okay, I've got my, um, my flame uh, lit and I have labeled my materials before I make my inoculation. You can see some notes on the board and these are in your lab manual as well. Uh, these are the pieces of information that you need to uh, write on every inoculation that you make. First of all, your name, not just your initials, but your name, the, uh, the bug or the organism's name that you're working with, the class info, for example, are you in Micro 102 or Micro 150, and also what lab section are you in, uh, the type of media that you're using, like triptych soyog, for example, uh, and when you are labeling petri plates, you want to label the bottom of the plate. That's the half that contains the auger, right? And when you're labeling slants or broth, you want to, um, with slants, I like to label uh, behind the slant so that uh, later I can uh, actually see the growth without having my writing in the way. And when I label tubes of broth, I write above the broth for the same reason and uh, ditto for deeps. Okay, so let me go ahead and start by um, inoculating uh, a TSA slant. I'm working with a bacterium named Staphylococcus aureus. It's growing on a TSA slant. The growth is restricted to the surface of the slant. So when I go into this tube to remove some of the organism, I don't want to um, gouge up the auger. I want to just gently glide my loop to remove some organism. So first thing I'm going to do is hold the, uh, the wire part of my inoculating loop just above the blue cone and let the wire glow orange. Only need to do that for a couple of seconds. Now, uh, I have sterilized the loop. I don't want to wave it around or set it down and really talking this much is not a good idea when you're performing aseptic technique. Uh, but anyways, give it a couple, three seconds to cool. If you go into the tube with the organism too soon, uh, you may hear a, a kind of a sound, which means that your loop was too hot and you killed whatever organism you touched. All right, so I flame my loop. Now what I'm going to do is, with the same hand that I uh, am holding my loop in, I'm going to use my little finger to grasp the cap of the tube. 
And then I'm going to, rather than unscrew the cap, I'm gonna unscrew the tube. I'm gonna give the lip of the tube just a really quick flame, just to kill any stray microorganisms that might be um, on the, uh, the lip of the tube. Then I'm going to go in with my lube and just gently remove a small quantity of the organism, flame the lip of the tube again, replace the cap, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is streak a, a, a TSA slant. Okay, even though this is a sterile slant, I still always uh, remove the cap the same way, flame the lip of the tube, and then I'm gonna get in here with my loop, and I'm gonna make as many zigzags up the surface of the slant, the entire length, uh, and I want to cover as much of the surface area of the slant with my organism as possible. Note I flame the lip of the tube again, replace my cap, and even though I'm going to be working with the same organism, I need to always finish by flaming my loop. All right, now let me talk about um, the correct technique for streaking a slant. If you look on the board, the tube to the left just sort of uh, just dragged the loop up the slant. That's really not acceptable. What you want to do is uh, what I'm showing you in the tube uh, drawn on, um, on the right, and I've made as many zigzags as possible on that slant. All right, now I'm going to show you how to inoculate a tube of triptych soy broth. Flame your loop again. When in doubt, flame your loop. Flame your loop again. Let it cool a little bit. Going to re remove a little bit more of the organism. This is my Staph aureus. Flame the lip of the tube again, replace the cap. And I've already labeled my tube of broth. So I'm going to remove my cap, flame the lip of the tube, and I'm only holding it like this so that you can see what's going on. Just gonna go in here and I'm gonna give that loop a little bit of a swish. Don't worry if not every little bit of organism comes off of your loop. There should be enough in there for, uh, uh, for some nice growth. Flame my loop again. And I'm gonna set it down. All right, now I'm going to show you the technique for inoculating a deep. And I will use my inoculating needle for this operation. Okay, I'm gonna flame the needle until it's orange and sterile. I'm gonna pick up my Staph aureus again and flame the lip of the tube. Now, I'm gonna be really careful when I go in here with my needle. I don't wanna damage the auger. It's just bad technique. I'm just gonna gently glide my needle on that slant, remove a little organism. And this is my deep. I will remove the cap, flame the lip of the tube, and I'm just gonna stab straight in and draw the needle straight out. It's that easy. Flame the lip of the tube again. Don't forget to flame that inoculating needle. All right, so if you take a look on the board here, uh, when I inoculate a deep, I'm trying to go straight in and draw the needle straight out. I'm trying to avoid tearing the auger uh, laterally when I do that. Just makes it easier to visualize results later if you uh, make a nice clean stab. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to show you how to do a streak for isolation um, on a TSA plate or any other kind of um, plate. All right, I'm gonna use my loop for this, flame my loop, let it cool a little bit, remove a little bit of the Staph aureus. Flame the lip of the tube, replace the cap. All right, now, uh, when you are streaking plates, and note I did label the bottom of this plate. Now, normally uh, when I streak plates, I'm just gonna crack the lid and go in here and do what I need to do, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take the lid off this time just so that you can, uh, you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is streak out the first quadrant, right? As making as many passes as I can. Then if I had the lid on, which I should, I would close the plate, give it a quarter turn, and then draw a little of the material from the first quadrant into the second one. All right, close and turn. Draw a little material from the second into the third quadrant, streak it out. Close my plate and uh, streak out that last quadrant. Okay, once that's done, of course I would replace my lid. 
flame the loop. And then always invert plates before you incubate them. You want the auger side, the side containing the organism, on the top when it's in the incubator. The reason we do that is to minimize, um, if there's any condensation in the plate, to minimize it uh, dripping onto the TSA plate, which would kind of cause all of the growth to grow together in one large mass. You, you would not get isolated colonies using that technique. All right, now let's take a look at what our results might be. All right, here's my plate and um, I'm going to streak it out with this uh, marker here. So I would streak out the first quadrant, make as many passes as you can. Then I want to draw just a little bit of material from the first quadrant into the second one, all right? And uh, I would do it like this, all right? I want to try to not go into that previous quadrant more than once. Then I'm going to draw some material from the second into the third quadrant, keep on streaking, and then finally a little bit of organism or a little bit of material from the third into the fourth quadrant. All right, uh, now I think I'm not going to use this plate, but let's take a look at this. This is uh, just trying to illustrate what your results might look like. All right, after incubation, I would expect to see a solid mass of growth in the first quadrant probably starting to thin out a little second into third, and then I may see some isolated colonies by the time I get to the fourth quadrant. Isolated colonies are going to be uh, separated in distance from any other growth on the plate, and they're going to have nice, round, regular margins. Um, all right, you guys, I think that's it. I hope you enjoy microbiology, and thanks for watching.